Peter, I wanted to jump in here because even as you're reading that statement, we have an update from Alan Fuderfoss, and I'll just read it to you. This is, you've read the statement. Fuderfoss now called us back at NBC News with a clarification. He now says there was a third person in that room in addition to Donald Trump Jr., Paul Manafort, and Jared Kushner. By my count, now that makes six people in the room, not the five we've been reporting all day. Fuderfoss says he spoke with that other individual, the sixth person, and not the Soviet, former Soviet counterintelligence officer we've mm -hmm. been talking about. So his description, we can't link it right now, but his description of the person we just heard about in that statement from Donald Trump Jr.'s attorney may have been not of the former counterintelligence officer, but of this alleged sixth person in the room. <laughs> And, and, and to be clear, Willie, we, we don't know whether or not there was an interpreter in the room at the time. So the potential exists that he may have spoken to said interpreter and not to this individual that we are now reporting about on NBC News. But just to emphasize this, remember, Donald Trump Jr., in his effort to try to put this all to rest, spoke to Sean Hannity on Fox News shortly after this whole story broke. And in simple terms, he basically said, that is everything trying to just get rid of this. I asked a White House official about this today, and I said, wouldn't it just have been simple to have told everything during the course of that interview or perhaps even in that initial statement that came out on Saturday that, as NBC News has reported, White House advisors to the president helped craft on the way back from the G20 trip that the president was aware of. This official, when asked if Donald Trump Jr. should have just put it all out immediately, basically said, you know, this person's not intimately aware of the details. They're not a part of the legal team, but said, you know, it's very likely he doesn't remember all the details from way back then. And I said, but wouldn't you go through all the records the same way that I am told that Jared Kushner's legal team went through emails in recent weeks, and that's how they became aware of this email chain, which led them to put Natalia Veselnitskaya, this Kremlin-linked lawyer's name, on the, the, the security clearance forms that Jared Kushner was filing. Wouldn't Don Jr.'s team have done the same? And basically the pushback I got was this was happening so quickly, as Don Jr. said back at the time, and happening so quickly more recently that he may not have had the ability to do that, which is an insufficient answer, especially when you consider the fact that this started on Saturday, and it was several days before that interview took place on Fox News. So even if that were a credible argument, they would have had approaching 100 hours to have tried to done that work and to try to get more information to better put this all to rest. You're absolutely right, Peter. And in that interview with Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity gave Donald Trump Jr. many opportunities to say, is this everything? Are you tell us everything. Donald yeah. Trump Jr. said, quote, this is everything. Sean Hannity <laughs> later said, is there a chance you met with anybody else? And he says, well, I guess it was possible, but nobody directly related to this story. Peter really, Alex, I, yeah, go ahead, Peter. I was just, just going to conclude by saying, you know, earlier this week I was in a briefing with Sarah Huckabee Sanders, and I said to her, you know, this drip, drip, drip is undermining the credibility of this administration. Sanders shot back and said it's undermining the credibility of the media, at which point I told her that was a quote directly taken from Trey Gowdy, the Republican of South Carolina. This isn't us talking. This is now Republicans on Capitol Hill, and their frustration only continues to grow.